That is the footage that this chap has released, OK? So that is what he's suggesting is proof of extraterrestrial life somewhere or other, about, a th I think he said, a thousand years old. Now, if you look at the close-ups of that, that, I think that's a meerkat. I, I think that's just... That's a flipping meerkat. That's a meerkat skeleton. I might be wrong. Um, but, but look at those images for yourself. If you're listening to this and unable to <laughs> see those pictures, I will... P I promise you, I, I'm going to post this picture on my social media, all right? F if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me now, at Ian Collins UK. That's at Ian Collins UK. I'm going to post that picture and tell me that is not a meerkat. Andy Lowndes, space expert, is back with us. How are you doing, Andy? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? It's, I, it's a meerkat, I'm telling you. There's no doubt. I don't know. I, I, I just can't buy into this chap's um, suggestion that this is proof of ET life. What are you making of it, Andy? Um, I'm afraid I don't <laughs> either, really. I mean... You, you, you get a feeling when you look at something, whether it's right or it's wrong, and you're looking at it and you're going, oh, I don't think so. And looking at the supposed evidence that's been put forward, the X-ray suggestion there's eggs inside these these things, yeah. and also the suggestion that they've had they've looked at the DNA, they've extracted DNA, and one third of that DNA is is not known to us. I'm thinking, thousand year old mummified corpse, you'd be lucky to get enough DNA to make that conclusion. You know, you, you yeah. can lose DNA on th some of that's only a, a few years old, let alone that long. So, no, I think it's all looking very, very spurious. Of course, the, the person involved, uh, Jamie Moussan, has, has actually got form on this, of course, when he did, several years ago, they found more aliens in Peru and they turned out to be... Um, Non-aliens. Babies. <laughs> Yes. Um, I, I, what I'm fascinated by, I think, Andy, is that he's... I mean, fair play to this chap. He's been given an audience of politicians here. Well, it's an interesting thing, and I think this is something that's actually gone on quite well with this, because since, since politicians decided, well, we're going to seriously look at this, as everyone's asked us to, and everyone's went, fine, that's what he wants you to do, get yeah. the serious scientific community in, and, and the registered scientific establishments involved. That's the, that's the key for this. Because the politicians, being politicians, I think there's probably no science degrees amongst virtually many politicians these days. There was at one time, but there really isn't now. So they're sort yeah. of going just purely on what they're told by experts. And finding out who those experts are is very, very difficult. They're used to being told what to do by by business people and like that and just swallowing what they're told. And they're sort of looking at this, having a clue what they're really talking about and sort of taking it all in. Admittedly, if someone provides evidence, you've got to do it properly, do it scientifically, but get it to the right scientific establishments to do the research. Don't just buy into what somebody is saying. Yes. And I think yeah. these people are sort of taking them, not so much for a ride, but they're having a bit of fun at their expense. Because I, I, I sense this chap, might, and I say this respectfully to him, um, mm. uh, I, I sense he might be laughed out of any laboratory that specialises in DNA. Mm. I think so, and I think, but that's what you need to do. But of course, what you'll, what will happen is they'll put it. Okay, all the laboratories can have their samples, and all the laboratories will come back and say, "Well, no, no you're, this is nonsense." And what will he say? Ah, oh, well, you're the government officials, aren't you? It's still part of the great conspiracy theory to yeah. keep the information from the public, and a lot of the population. It, especially in America, sadly enough, and certainly in Europe now, thanks to the internet, will say, oh, yes, that's confirmed it, that is conspiracy theory. Yeah. And the real science gets lost. And the real serious research that needs to be done in this, and there really does, also gets lost, which is very sad indeed. Indeed. And I was going to mention on that wider point, uh, Andy, what, what are your thoughts on life elsewhere, even if it isn't these little... Uh, clay characters <laughs> that are, are sitting yeah. somewhere on exhibition in Mexico. Um, I mean, that sense that there are other life forms out there. There are, you know, right yeah. now on in, in some other universe, there is a, a, a parallel thing going on. There's probably yeah. two people like us chatting away, discussing yeah. something else. Do you, do you buy into that, though? Yes, yes. I think, I think intelligent life does exist still without other parts of our galaxy, let alone without the, within, within the universe itself. Microorganisms probably exist possibly still on Mars and sometimes in, on the Moon, Enceladus and on the Moon. 
um, Europa. Um, so I think I think microorganisms, I think they'll be yeah. the first alien life I'll ever encounter sure. will be those. And we might even, to be honest, something which is a bit, bit more interesting is we might actually confirm that some of the organisms we actually have on air does origin, do originate out in space. Indeed. Some small microorganisms. But, but can you actually imagine, you know, fully formed people doing stuff, you know, with buildings I and you I know, think things that's gonna be very, elsewhere? I think that's. I, I think they do exist, but finding them is now going to be really difficult because we're talking at organisms on, on planets which are many, many light years away, yeah. and communicating them, them will be the first thing to try and do. But supposing a species is a million years in advance of us, supposing that that is the case, and they've actually picked up our radio signals. Oh, look at that! There's a there's early forms of life happening yeah. on that planet, and they've started to communicate. How interesting! Right, no interest to us at all. For instance, on this planet here, we have fantastic quantities of living things, amazing creatures which yeah. can see in different waves of spectrum. We don't try to communicate with half of them. Why? Because we feel we are superior. Why would we wish to do that? And that could actually be happening out there as well. Plus, of course, some Brian Cox, I think, raised, which was very correct. Why do we assume the organisms will actually look like we look like? Two arms, two legs, um, and so on. They might not. They might be actually very, very different from us. And that would put a different complexion on the way True. they would observe yeah it, it's kind of I, I suppose vanity personified that we always think mm. that you know something else out there will will, will look as we look uh, that that is the only our, our design is the only possibility in terms yeah. of b b any any anthropological journey has to look like us Yes, I mean, there is a good logical reason why people come to that conclusion, because the amount of energy that's required for the brain to operate uh, stereo vision and the position of the head above, high up, not low down. Yeah. So there is some actually good... And the fact we have posable thumbs, for instance, these creatures only have three fingers. How do they manipulate tools and operate things? That would be actually quite difficult. That's one of the reasons we have thumbs. And many people have often said that if cats had thumbs, they would take over the world. Yeah, that's just a scare. I mean, cats are scary enough, but a cat yeah. with a, a cat on that bombshell, cat with a <laughs> thumb, goodness me. It's like imagining dogs with fingers. Me and a friend once had the most uh, hilarious night, usually assisted with some ale. Uh, when we the, the concept of a dog with fingers was just the funniest thing we'd ever heard. Uh, the more you try to envisage that, um, uh, the, the more disturbing or hilarious it becomes.